Jr. On May 1, 2011, Osama bin Laden was declared by U.S. President Barack Obama to have been killed in a U.S. raid on his city house in Pakistan. On the same date, eight years before, then-President Bush Jr. made his Mission Accomplished speech. On the same date, 66 years before, Adolf Hitler was announced dead over Allied radio airwaves, ending World War II. On the same date, 120 years before, May Day was declared Labor Day to honor workers slain for belonging to labor unions. On the same date, 235 years before, the Bavarian Illuminati was established by Adam Weishaupt and the U.S. Declaration of Independence was signed. On the same date, 304 years before, Great Britain was formed from Scotland and England by the Act of Union. May 1 has long been held as the first day of summer and was celebrated by the pagan druids of pre-Christian Europe until the Dark Ages. The problem with the triumvirate conspiracy creating myths is that they are using real people as their basis. Who, for example, was Osama bin Laden? Who, for that matter, is Barack Hussein Obama? Osama bin Laden was born March 10, 1957. This picture, provided by someone claiming to be a son of Osama bin Laden, Omar, to American author of pro-war propaganda books John Sasson, purportedly shows Osama bin Laden at Oxford. He is the one on the far right, according to their joint memoirs, but there's one problem. Bin Laden was never at Oxford. He allegedly attended al Thagir Model School, a secondary school in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, from 1968 to 1976 when he began King Abdulaziz University founded in 1967 and converted to a state university in 1971 in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. According to suggestions made by some reports he might have earned a degree there in either 1979 or 1981 it is known, however, that by the time the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan on December 24, 1979, Osama bin Laden was already training in the Mujahideen under the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, CIA. Barack Hussein Obama, Jr. was born August 4, 1961. This picture is from the senior yearbook of Obama's high school, Punahou Private School in Honolulu, Hawaii. It is captioned Barry Obama because at that time Barack went by the nickname Barry. His friends at that time knew him as Barry Sotoro after his Indonesian stepfather Lolo Sotoro. The reason that Obama's birth certificates have been called into question is not entirely clear as it is unknown who originated the rumors that he was not a naturalized U.S. citizen. The reason it can be questioned, however, is simple. Obama and his mother traveled to Indonesia shortly after his birth, and Obama did not return to live in Hawaii again until 1971. He moved to Los Angeles, California in 1979 to attend the private Occidental College, largely funded by grants and scholarship donations by Rhodes, Truman, Watson and Fulbright Scholarships and the Carnegie Foundation. In short, while Barry Obama Sotoro Dunham, the future president of the USA, was entering Occidental College in 1979, Osama bin Laden was a Mujahideen soldier training for the CIA. In this picture, we see an early picture of Osama bin Laden with Shbignu Brzezinski, author of The Grand Chessboard following the Sour Revolution of April 27, 1978, when Brzezinski, then serving as National Security Advisor to 39th U.S. President Jimmy Carter, trained Osama and the other Afghani rebels prior to the Soviet invasion in Operation Cyclone. During the presidency of 40th U.S. President Ronald Reagan from 1980 to 1988, 
funding for the Mujahideen from the US CIA reached levels of six hundred million dollars per year. Soviet troops finally withdrew from Afghanistan on February 12, 1989, but CIA funding and training via their Pakistani counterpart, the ISI, for the Mujahideen continued, and by 1992 they had recruited over 100,000 insurgent jihadists and invested funds in excess of 20 billion U.S. dollars toward making them into a professional army. Osama bin Laden's code name in the CIA was Tim Osman. Meanwhile, Barry Satoro, now calling himself Barack Obama, transferred from Occidental College to Columbia University in New York City following a brief vacation in Indonesia in mid to late 1981. By 1983, he had earned a BA degree in political science with a speciality in international relations. By this point in his life, he was already well established and his serving as the first black president of the Harvard Law Review in 1990, graduating magna cum laude with a JD degree from Harvard Law School in 1991 and returning to Harvard as a lecturer from 1992 earned him a spot on the 40 under 40 powers to be list published by Crane Chicago Business in 1993. By 1997 Barack Hussein Obama the mulatto from Honolulu was serving as the Illinois State Senator. He served as such until 2008 when he was elected the 44th president of the USA the first man of non-Caucasian complexion to serve in that office. And although that fact is irrelevant to his credentials, a great many of those voters who elected him did so solely for that reason. On October 9, 2009, Obama was crowned the Nobel Peace Prize Laureate, countermanding the Title of Nobility Clause of Article 1, Section 9 of the U.S. Constitution for promoting a new climate in international relations. During the third and final presidential debate held on Wednesday, October 15, 2008, the Democratic and Republican Party candidates, supposedly rivals, shook hands with one another following their mutually voting into law the massively unpopular bank bailout bill proposed in the final days of the Bush Jr. administration called the Emergency Economic Stabilization Act of 2008 and enacted as Public Law 110-343 and the Troubled Asset Relief Program, the TARP Fund, on October 3, 2008. This plan authorized $700 billion of U.S. taxpayer money be allocated by the government to the private Federal Reserve Bank so that it could buy out all its smaller member banks under the FDIC system. This event ended the Bush administration with a bang and passed their baton of fiscal and monetary responsibility on to Obama, who immediately continued it with his American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of February 17, 2009. As the Republican John McCain and Democrat Barack Obama shook hands and congratulated each other on their both having voted for TARP and the bank bailout bill, the New World Order subtly declared its victory over the American political system. And now that Barack Obama has been the 44th U.S. President for three of his four-year term, this former Harvard Law lecturer on constitutional law has upheld the Draconian Patriot Act, maintained the DHS, left open the detention centers, as well as expanded the war on terror into Pakistan by using drone planes to bomb civilians there, as well as by dropping bombs on Muammar Gaddafi's private residence in Tripoli, Libya, during U.S. military implementation of a U.N. resolution to establish a no-fly zone over Libya. And now, he has murdered Osama bin Laden. He has reduced the office of one president to the role of slave to the one before. His own political initiatives represent a sham Democratic Party line, 
a form of unified neoliberalism that was at the heart of the big government under the Bush era neocons all along. This neoliberal big government is a global government run by allowing an unelected, secret, rich elite to control the U.S. military and media. And now that Barack Obama, the new big brother poster child for the elite's statist empire, has announced Osama bin Laden, a veritable Emmanuel Goldstein foil to the two-faced U.S. presidents, has been murdered, that the terrorist mastermind and criminal genius who carried out the most brutal attacks ever on American soil is dead, Will he reverse the Bush-era war on terror? Will he dismantle the DHS and close the death camps? The CIA could have killed bin Laden at any time following 9-11, but they instead allowed him to live in peace for a decade. He was only killed to boost the neocons' own stocks and ratings. Before 2012, Barack Obama must face a deep personal choice as 44th President of the USA. Does he want to continue on maintaining the status quo, as he seems to still be doing now, or does he want to deliver on his campaign promise of bringing change, real change, to the status quo of business as usual among the wealthy elites? Although the burden is on him to change his own ways first, it will be the fault of we, the people, if we continue, as though stunned by a car wreck, to watch him fail and to give him second chance after second chance, hoping beyond hope he will change, yet ultimately unable to make him do so ourselves. When you go into the voting booth next year, in 2012, the age of the Mayan apocalypse, you will also have to make a choice. Your choice is easier than the moral when facing every president. Your choice will be simple a vote for one person to be president for the next four years until you vote again next time in 2016. Who you pick personally will only matter in the end if your candidate wins. But whether your candidate wins or loses is ultimately irrelevant compared to the fact that you must vote with your conscience based on your own moral principles and ethical beliefs for the person you more than just think will but also whom you think should win and whom you think if they do win would deserve their victory most. If you keep voting for the new world order then the new world order is all you will ever get. The new world order candidate is not the lesser of two evils. They are liars, traitors, and deserve to be imprisoned for life or executed for treason. If that is who you support, you should not vote at all, ever. Our Democratic Republic is not part of your grand chess game. The U.S. President is not merely a stepping stone to wealth and power in some behind-the-scenes elitist cabal. It is a sworn duty to protect and uphold the Constitution of the USA. If you as a citizen cannot take seriously your duty to vote, you will not be able to elect a president who takes seriously their duty to that oath of office. Personally, I'm voting, just as in 2008 when I had to write him in, for Dr. Ron Paul, because I know his beliefs are in constitutional government and sound monetary policies, which are values I also share.